Ndichete rasta. Nasinda uya ni yume inyuan. I have been absent without leave. <laughs> Nanchi ita tuma settings. Kwa angu nijicheka chika kutinjiru kufamba se. Plus I was babysitting one of my nieces. One of my absolute favorite nieces. So my time was consumed with that. So I wanted to talk to you Nasa about um, recognizing a dead situation. I wanted also to include um, aid, dead aid. So this talk really is inspired because Mumbai, and then I was dusting down my bookshelves, and then I came across one of my favorite authors. This is a book that I've read, Anonzi Dead Aid. It's written by one uh, sister, Anonzi Dambisa Moyo. This is uh, one pretty young lady. That's her. Uh, she is from Zambia. So Zambia is a neighbor to Zimbabwe. So this lady, she's, uh, she's a gem, really, uh, on the landscape of life because she's an economist. Economics, I'm not easy out. It's one of the really, really tough subjects. Uh, when I went to do my A levels, um, they were uh, allowing us to choose which subjects you wanted to choose, and economics was one of them. And Akasaba, economics is Goja. I went with uh, accounting instead. But this girl, she's um, she's worked in very prominent, high-profile positions, and then it prompted her to write this book. I'll just write a few, read a few points on on what they've said about this, this about this particular book, and I'd encourage you, Kanawin Mkana, to get a hold of it. I'll try and see if I can get a, a free audio for you, Kwandino Mbuchagama talking books, and then I'll put the link on Tete Rasta, and you can listen for yourself, and then articulate soft. Uh, sorry, articulate, self-confident, and angry. This book um, marks a turning point, a damning assessment of the failures of 60 years. Um, the Sunday Herald uh, said that um, it kicks over the traditional piety that Western aid benefits the third world. Um, and that was uh, a comment by the Sunday, Her by the Sunday Herald. Um, so this book is a gem. Uh, do try and get it if you can. Um, one of the other things that prompted me to start thinking about this is I bought myself some shoes uh, two weeks ago. These ones. Ah, I went to check and I seen the scissors when I was doing something. So it's really painful. So I bought myself some trainers. I took them home because uh, I had an injury at the beginning of the year. When I got home, I realized that they they packed butu the same size this is the butu yeku right hand side this is buku yeku right hand side so when i was trying to um, go for my walk and my run i found that i had shoes of the same size now the assistant who was helping me was new on the job and then the other one took the whole thing and decided that she was going to run it in the tail so when she ran it she obviously packed the display shoe as well as the box shoe so i've ended up with um two pairs of shoes and i put it on my facebook and hey <laughs> Yesterday, but it really illustrates that sometimes we go out in search of something and then we have bias remorse. We had my elections in 2013. I'm not so much political, but I want to tie this in so that you really understand could dead situations come about and affect us in many different ways and there's no need for us to shy away from this situation. So I promise quite a lot of jobs, I promise quite economy stimulation and so on. Ne, 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 ne zim assets. Ah. That was such a beautiful document to read. I have even got it in my laptop. But uh, to date, there's nothing that's materialized. It's almost like we've got two two shoes that are the same size. So coming back to aid and what's going on. Zimbabwe is in debt. Okay? I want you to understand that there's no country under the sun that's not in debt. The USA, sorry, the UK, let's start with the UK. The UK is in debt. The Telegraph, which is one of the papers that I like to read, says that it's in 1.6 trillion debt to its creditors. Now, what that amounts to is each man and each woman and every child will owe 24,900 pounds each could he constituted this much so you wonder would he, if we were going to pay it back by when would we have finished and then the u.s itself this is the other um big 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 brother it owes 19 trillion u.s dollars so i can't even begin to count my trillions and i dare not ask the jacob zuma to <laughs> to count it but these are the countries that come to Africa and offer aid. And yet they're in a lot of debt themselves. You know what I'm saying? This is really, really incredible. 
So sometimes ngati rege ku varwa. Never move on. We are here with this piety saying we want to help you. Chi, chi, chi. Even when they are also in debt, especially to the extent that they are. When that 15, um, that 15 um, billion went missing to Zimbabwe, I think somebody was saying Zimbabwe's debt was 12 billion. So we would have been able to pay all the debt off to Chisarane 3 billion but that hasn't been verified so i can't give you the figure yeah debt here zimbabwe as of this date in 2016 if anybody knows please get it will be useful for you to go to my websites and check out our neighbors how much they owe botswana south africa kenya malawi that is hard on our country and say we are such failures because of our condition because in debt. what we want to see is a change bring life into the situation by being a bit more prudent with spending of money i know that uh, you know a lot of ministers one on a map four by four hour and stuff like this it really makes me think of and miss the likes of sankara and Kwame Nkurume, and Marcus Garvey, you know, uh, ah, the list can go on of people who really, really kind of had the Pan-African dream to look at how can we improve our condition. So this book is a pretty good book. If you can get it, please do. And also the reason why I was sharing it with you is because there are a lot of NGOs in Zimbabwe that are operating. A lot of them, they get money to function it's just I don't in I don't be part of a an NGO that used to get money but this money comes nema caveats you are able to do certain activities and have certain outcomes but they're not always in the best interest of the country and so that's why I kind of stepped out of it because we wanted to start having the kind of dialogues that are happening now where we'll be saying this is our flag it's everybody's flag how can we be part of the solution how can I Tete Rasta be part of the solution how can she Grayson Fursa become part of the solution but then you are supposed to have certain rhetoric so that you can keep getting that money. So can I also to do rhetoric it home? Then you become excluded. Then when I was cleaning my car this morning, I somebody came into my driveway. I was minding my own business. And then he was like, Oh, I've come to give you this. As you know, and this will vote. Um, they are voting to stay in or to vote out of the EU. Uh, this is in the United Kingdom. So in India, Andrew who voted out, yes, let's stay in the EU. But this fellow, he's a healthcare professional who volunteered his day uh, and on the dawn to, to, to pass out these pamphlets. And he was saying he doesn't really belong to any political party. But he went in deeper to explain, could if we leave the EU, how will it affect our public services? How is being in the EU already affecting my services? So I just wanted to share this with you because we're talking about money. We're talking about, you know, our leaderships. This is the leadership here in the UK. And this is the stuff that they don't tell you. So never point at Zimbabwe and say, oh, my leaders, they are so terrible. They don't do this. Even Munomumu, Britain, Mataka, Gara, Tishi Badarama, Texas, they're not telling us everything. And so these are the chilling facts. I'm going to take a picture of this and I'll stick it uh, on the timeline so you can have a look for yourself. Uh, it's kind of got a bias to the Labour Party, but hey, so what? My facts come. And the UK gives Brussels 50 million pounds every day that's 350 million every week 19 billion every year and we get less than half back but brussels stops us from um spending on our priorities for jobs in manufacturing energy regeneration agriculture or fisheries and our nhs and public services need this money to improve our schools build more hospitals and protect our public services and then they've got this initiative it runs the ttip and remaining in the EU risks our NHS, railways, public services. It is a trade deal that helps multinational corporations undermine the UK's key public services. So I'll stop there. There's other information that uh, it goes down. But one of the things that uh, we have found in as Zimbabweans in Zimbabwe is that we've had certain strategies in our economy that have not really served the country, especially money from the World Bank and Macaviats, Avanuti Taurirauti, you know, it, certain things must be bought from certain places and such like. I just wish Patrick Chinamasa would be honest and, you know, start really 
engaging my technocrats in our Zimbabwean community who are also economists, people who have also worked in these organizations to seek the solution here today. Akuna nika is not my problems, people. That's why I'm doing this. You know, even examine your own life, chayo chayo. Tinde kupi kwa wine ma dead situations. Nde kupi kune kwa upi wa dead aid. You know, there are some relatives when we were abroad, vanoku, vanoku, and then they may give you some money and then you engage in a business or do something and then you find that you are forever in debt. They're always saying, oh, if it wasn't for me, this one would never have succeeded. Those are dead situations. It's better for you to go to a bank and borrow money or to go to a friend and borrow money or to just say to the person, and then you pay them back so that Kanawa pay back. You are free. Your conscience is free and progress belongs to you. So I think this was Bukuriari and the Iriri. And for those who are not big readers, and the little book of abuse, I dig into this from time to time. And I dig into this on the little bit that I was reading, which was very funny. And what would I do without you apart from be happy? <laughs> That's what you have to say. Sakaiwa, my tapa sata tandara. Mangwana tiripa pam tango radio station uh, from two o'clock uh, in the afternoon until uh, four p.m. So I'm going to put the information on my uh, timeline. And ikokoko, we are going to be talking about uh, emotional intelligence and how it can help you as a person uh, to become better. Uh, Tete will be playing some music. I'll be taking phone calls uh, and answering questions. It's going to be very, very interactive. And I really appreciate your support. Sakaiwa, Maita Basa, have a great day. And whatever you do, don't forget to be patriotic. Examine the dead situations that are in your life or in the lives of those that you care about and love. And then create a strategy where you create a good distance or have closure. I want my tabasa. Salute.